my love nuggets, that tall glass of drinkable water that came up with dirty, dirty jokes. He is our wine connoisseur, Silent and Stardust. Tell us about the wine we're drinking. So tonight, guys, we are doing something we have never done on Witches and Wine. We have we're sober. No, just kidding. Well, not that. But we don't do that. No, we are actually serving what's considered a perfect wine. This is a hundred point rated wine. We have never featured one on the show. Um, a hundred points is in a very, very exclusive, specialized thing. And tonight, I have chosen Domon de Chevalier. This is a Pisac. This is a Pisac Liagnon out of the Bordeaux region. Uh, Cabernet dominant with a little um, Merlot and a little Petit Verdot. Very elegant, slightly dry, earthy, nice combination of blackberry, cherry, a touch of cassis, a touch of cedar. Just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful wine. So um, definitely not on the inexpensive side. Um, if you're going to buy a bottle of this, you're going to be looking between $120 and $150 a bottle if you can find it. So like I like said, not a cheapie, but absolutely phenomenal. Um, if you've watched previous episodes that you know that me and Lola are big fans of Bordeaux. Yes. And this is quite easily the best one we have served on the show. This is really, really good. Like, oh, I my wish goodness. we could share with you all, but we ain't that rich. We're not so that rich. No. We're, we're sharing it just for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So we're going to talk about, well, okay. So for those that are tuning in on YouTube, did not get to see the Balbo Gigliana uh, because you, if you didn't register for Spring Mysteries, you missed out on it, and it was great. I'm telling you. Um, so we're going to talk about Balbo. We want to we want to continue that amazing energy and bring it onto our topic. So for those of you who are not familiar with Balbo, um, she is uh, my gosh, she is amazing. She is she's uh, a, an ancestral deity, an ancestral goddess of uh, mirth and uh vulvas uh she is she is very much into spreading healing with her laughter and her love and she loves to make you smile and um i don't want to give away too much but she does play a, a very uh important role in the mysteries this weekend and um i don't know if you know this but i'm her vessel <laughs> so um she is very near and dear to me she is uh, a bigger a bigger woman mm -hmm. um sometimes as a older matronly looking woman she is the uh and there's many different stories many different myths uh she is in the one that's most common she is the um wet nurse i believe to uh the royal family of elusis um she is a servant but she's one of those servants that you want to you want to sit next to her right like if you're on a break you know, that person at your job that's like, oh, you know, you're working really hard and you go into the cafeteria at your job or whatever. And there's always that big jolly woman that's always got a dirty story to tell, but always has that wisdom to pass on in a funny way. You can cry with her. You can laugh with her. That's who Balbo is to me. And we've had there's several um, in this chat who held her. Uh, as well um, were her vessel. And so they can add more to the conversation too when we get to it. But um, Nanny McPhee, absolutely, <laughs> Dusty. Uh, she, I, I want to talk about that sacral energy that she really focuses on because it's not just that it's, it, well, it is, it's, it's, it's the laughter. You know, when you laugh and you feel really good and you're just, it's that warm feeling in your belly and you just, that pure joy. And it's, she's about that, that, that laughter from way down there, that deep belly laugh, you just laugh. And it is, it is, it awakens that sacral energy. So I want to ask this is right off the bat because I was thinking of good questions to ask our participants. She's very much uh, a friend to to the female sex. She's very much female empowerment and stuff. But there are a lot of men or or those who identify with the male energy that absolutely adore her. And I'm a fan. Yeah, <laughs> Silenus is a big fan of Balbo. I want I want it pro Volvo 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 I was a, that's a car um I want to ask real quick the <laughs> the men in our uh our audience here um 
how is she, how does she help you? How does she help the male energy? Can someone raise their hand and let me know how that works for you? That I'm kind of looking at Dusty because we've talked about this, I think, before. I said he was an honorary uh, member of the House of Balbo. So, um, yeah. Do you want to talk? Do you want to add to that? Does Balbo, how do you, how does, how is Balbo working with that kind of energy? I am talking through Bella's because yeah. we're in the same room. So, uh, for those out there in TV land, can't believe I'm on TV. I know these people. Okay. So, um, <laughs> working with Balbo, uh, as, as, uh, as a project, a projective masculine person, uh, she is empowerment of the feminine form. And to some men, that can be terrifying. Like to the to the wrong kind of guy, that is kryptonite, you know. But I think that's good because mm -hmm. I think the people that have. Uh, an issue with that kind of strength from women and when I watch them run away it's a barometer of whether or not they're the type of person I aspire to be so yes. it very much has taught me through the way other people interact with her yeah know? I think so. I, I I agree with you on that and I think uh, yeah. Silomus can agree it, it's for the projective energy the 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 male energy that is not uh I guess you would say the toxic masculine type, but it's the, more of the supporter of women. Yeah, it's not it's not for the insecure male who has to feel superiority to women instead of equality to women. Yeah. Yeah. So I because she is projective receptive energy. Mm, and that, that makes sense. Scary people who are projective energy only. Yeah. Because she pushes her pussy out. She's like, no, <laughs> screw you. Here it is. I am Here's awesome. Diamond. Hear me roar. And you're going to be happy, damn it. No, drink that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. She's just very, yeah. she's projective receptivity, and that's scary to some people. But I find that very comforting. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, thank, thank you so much, Dusty. I'm, I'm so glad you shared that with us. And I want to say that uh, her, um, her working with her, if you have any kind of sexual trauma um, with your body or um, because I know I've had some some trauma on my JJ and um, she's really helping me work through it. That is one of the most beautiful gifts she has given me um, to embrace it, embrace your vagina, embrace that um, there's all different shapes and sizes and looking at vagina art and people who just draw pictures of the different shapes and the different sizes and 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 colors and stuff like that um it makes me feel really good about mine you know because it's almost there's no two vaginas are alike they're like snowflakes <laughs> you try to catch them on your tongue try to catch them on your tongue um i want to bring up that Kathleen uh, was the vessel of Balbo and she knitted a one of those pussy hats and she knitted and she didn't just make it pink. She made it different shades of pink. And am I correct, Kathleen, you made that because of the different shades of you are absolutely correct. That is yes. exactly why I knitted it in three different shades of pink. Yes. And I really love that. I really thought that was great because just like you see on TV and stuff, you know, you see the perfect little, um, you know, body parts and, and you end up comparing it. Like mine doesn't look like that. Well, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mine doesn't look like that. Yours doesn't look like that. Mine doesn't look like yours. Yours doesn't look like mine. And we should be really proud of that. And in real life, we don't have airbrushing. Yes. We don't have airbrushing. <laughs> that is a big part of it. So, um, here we got a question here. What advice do you have for those new working with her? Um, Deep dive. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, laughter and um, I, I think 
for me working with her, it was about the gift of healing because she's a healing goddess with her with her laughter and her love. And lit, put down a towel. Put down a towel. <laughs> my my basement's flooded. Um, <laughs> yeah, just I mean, enjoy humor and laughter because she really is that one that kind of shows you that even when life is. I mean, when life is really bad and really shitty, and we are going through some pretty shitty times right now, um, just remember to laugh and find those moments of joy. So I, to, to honor her is not take yourself too seriously because there's plenty of time for that serious business. So remember to laugh. Uh, watch funny movies, mm -hmm. stand-up comedians. Just don't go and slap them. I couldn't resist. Um, you know, just get some good laugh time. Just, you know, um, does anyone else that's worked with Balbo? I know there's some, I know Kathleen, I don't know who else is in here or someone who works with her want to say something you could work, work with. Basically mm -hmm. you said most of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> really you, the biggest thing is to remember that you are a beautiful vessel. And she loves you for, you are exactly perfect the way you are. It, you don't it, have to set an image in front of her. She sees you and she accepts you for who you are. Yes. That's, that's it. It brings tears to my eyes when, when, when that message comes through. Isabel was the vessel of Balbo last year. Did you want to say something on that? Well, I think um, your partner really hit on it. The same thing, I am I got to be the vessel of Balbo last year, and I'm also a computer teacher for elementary school. And one of the lessons we teach is about airbrushing and how that isn't real. Yeah. It's, it's not real. And there's so much pressure to look like you don't have intestines. <laughs> so the... <laughs> So we actually get to talk about that real people have intestines. We we have body parts inside. And I had never, even at my absolute skinniest, where still the blessings, but yes. tiny little waist, I still felt fat because I had a, a pouch. Mm -hmm. It's normal. It's cultural. So getting that love of Balbo, I now am able to let people hug me and touch my tummy. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't do that before. I was mortified yeah. that you would, you know, feel that I jiggle. Oh, yeah. Balbo loves to jiggle. She <laughs> loves the jiggle. Oh, my God. I stood in front of the mirror naked and just jiggle and, and she's just, I can hear her laughing. I can just hear her laughing. Um, you wanted to say something, Simon? Well, we got to remember that it wasn't until the last 60 to 70 years that the, the, the form of the female has changed to be desirable on the thin. Before you wanted shape, you wanted curves, you wanted, you, you were the presentation of life. You wanted, you know, you wanted large breasts, you wanted hips, you wanted a belly because it showed that you were fertile, that you were the desirable. Look at the Botticelli women. Yeah. That's what we were always based off of for the longest, longest, longest time. And then only with the modernization of society and magazines have we got this false image of what a woman's supposed to look like. Yeah, absolutely. Nim, you have your hand up. Can you please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I I I really appreciate because I because I our great minds think alike. Nim, sister from another Mister. I was going to say it's not just about the fat shaming; it's all it's body shaming in general. Yeah. 
um, no matter what size you are, uh, you have to love your body. And she really helps you with that. She gives you that power to um, celebrate yourself. Um, we've got some more hands up. I want to make sure we get um, Minty. You have something to say? Yes, I do. It's actually on why curvy bodies are not widely accepted anymore. And the answer is like many problems within our society, generational trauma. Ding. And basically what happened is that World War I and World War II happened. So global famine, global rationing. And so people had to ration things like fabric and textiles. And so the fashion industry was like, we need tiny people. Guess what, y'all? The beauty standards are changing. So yeah. right now, what our world is going through as a result of body acceptance and body positivity is love yourself for who you are. Get out of this trauma. We need to heal each other as a collective so that we understand that all bodies are beautiful and that you don't need to be harming yourself to be beautiful. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. Oh, much love always, Minty. Minty always says it like it is. Uh, I saw Roman, your hand up. W would you like to add something to this? Well, one thing that I've experienced, uh, feeling the power of Bible through the mysteries goes beyond just uh, body positivity and that is the energy of radical acceptance mm. yes. being radically accepted for every aspect of yourself including your flaws you know for me i was raised by an alcoholic prostitute with a horrible temper problem mm -hmm. and she was very abusive but she had this duality that when she was drunk in a happy mood she was very crass very humorous she had a very babble energy mm -hmm. And for me, coming to the energy of Babu and encountering Babu at the mysteries and then taking that energy home with me was yeah. that moment of radical acceptance, not only of who I grew up being, but of that wound. Yes. That energy of, I understand that she was like me, but she was also not like me. That yes. she was not accepting, that she was not loving. And I encountered in Babu the energy of that mother that I wish I could have had. Yes. And I could have potentially have had if my biological mother had worked on her issues. Yes. And the energy of Baobo as a mother goddess comes from that energy of pure radical acceptance of just that you are perfect just the way you are with all of your flaws and all your imperfections. And if you're not happy with them, you can make yourself a better person and continue to work on them. Because that's what she does. She lifts you up. Yes, she does. There's, there's no making you feel bad about yourself or insecure. She, she almost is like when your insecurities about yourself is what she loves about you. I mean, that's what I've noticed. Cause I'm like, but I've got hair here. She's like, I love that hair, but I've got a huge, you know, my ass has got caught. looks like cottage cheese ass. I love cottage cheese. Like she just, she yes. will make you laugh at your own insecurities. Oh, and yes. in to set you free of the yes. pain that you have attached to them. That is the power of her humor. She, yes. It is about setting you free from what you yourself view wrong with you. Well, our imperfections are what make us perfect. Yes, and precisely. people don't realize that. You know, not everyone is going to fall into the lines of what people uh, claim is what is perfect. What is perfect is what you accept of yourself and how you view yourself and how if you're lucky enough to have a partner who treats you and, and values you and loves you for you. My favorite part of Lola, and she's going to hate it, is I love her curves. I oh, always have. I don't hate that. And she has, you know, and she's had, you know, she's complained at times, of, you know, I'm, I'm to this, I'm to that. And I'm like, no, you're beautiful. You're perfect to me. And I love the parts that you want to fix. I think they're already, they're already fixed. And it's also important to know that she also supports if you want to work on your body, if you want to work on being healthy, because she wants you to find the joy. So it's she's not saying like if you say, you know what, I you know, for me, I'm I'm trying to eat better and move more. So she's not saying, oh, keep those curves, keep that because well, one, I'm never gonna lose my curves. I mean, who are we kidding? I am 50 years old. This is this is it, but I want to feel just I want to feel better and you know and she she really helps that and I just love her so much I I can't even 
explain how what she's done for me and and the love that she has showed me and it is truly unconditional i want to i want to do a question though about because there's there's a fine line between aphrodite and balbo i i feel because aphrodite is the goddess of love and beauty and so there's that beautiful those beautiful things that you work on when when you're with aphrodite i have not worked with aphrodite yet balbo is my um Balbo's getting me ready to work with Aphrodite. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Balbo's building it up and then I'll I'll go to Aphrodite. But um can someone who has worked with Aphrodite and I'm looking at Bella <laughs> tell me so. tell me the different the, the, the difference between the Balbo work and the Aphrodite work? So <clears throat> where Balbo is about feeling sacred with who you are and the belly laugh <coughs> and the joy of the experience of living. Aphrodite is about the salon, um, perfecting the vessel, a accepting that you're already perfect, but making it better. Aphrodite mm -hmm. is going to mm -hmm. tweak the details to, yes, your hair is beautiful, but if you roll it, it'll be prettier. Yeah. Yes, your hair is beautiful rolled, but if you put it up and put this jewelry in it, it'll be prettier. Yeah, that kind of thing. Aphrodite, it, it's really difficult to work with Aphrodite if you don't already love yourself. If you're if you're very self-critical, working with Aphrodite will make you feel like your mom's picking on you, you know, but that's yeah. not where she's coming from. Where she's yeah. coming from is you are gorgeous. Let me make you more gorgeous. Yes. So it's if you stand this I'm way, fine. if you hold your shoulders back. And we get that from our mom. Yes. And so some yeah. of us resent that, you know. Yeah. But, but that's not. She she wants to make you the the perfection. She is the perfection. Yeah. Right. So she wants to make you perfect, and so it's all about grooming. Yeah. Where Balbo is is the opposite of that. So it's like taking you from a in a wine sense, since we're on witches and wine. Going from a 99 to a 100 point rated. It's just that fine tuning to get that extra little step to just put you over the edge. Yeah, it's fine tuning. It's, yeah. it's taking what and you the have. Focus is, the focus is different too. So, like, Bal it's not Balbo don't groom. I mean, she dresses up, she wears funny hats. She's yeah. just, it's a different focus. Yeah. It's embracing the, the things that maybe uh, aren't considered beauty standards. Because when you look at Aphrodite, she's, she's, you know, it's that beauty standard. It's almost pageantry. It's like, you know, this is, this is Aphrodite, everything on her, the jewelry, the hair. Um, and then you've got Balbo and she's like, yes, that's beautiful. But also your belly when it jiggles is beautiful. And you laugh your, your boobs, even if they hang way down here, those are just beautiful boobs and it's because it's there's a humor in it too and yeah. there's a humor in it and humor is beautiful and we don't pick we don't go who's the prettiest so that we can make her aphrodite either um when i first came out into directing the mysteries i purpose purposely picked women who needed to know that they were beautiful yeah you know so uh, we have we have had heavy women who were absolutely gorgeous. When I was Aphrodite, people were like, oh, my God, all your curves are so beautiful. It's not that, yeah, there's no, like, um, you're not beautiful. It is you're already perfect. Yes. I can make yeah. you better if you just stand this way, if you just do add this detail. It's it's polishing the, sh the silver. To, to me, Balbo versus Aphrodite is like when I, for me personally, when I look in the mirror and I look at me without makeup and no bra and I'm, I'm being kind of silly and I'm just like, Oh, and Babel's like, that is so beautiful. And then I'm like, but I'm going to go out tonight. So I, and I put the makeup on and then I put the bra on and then I put the nice blouse on and then I put my hair up and because that makes me feel good too then that's Aphrodite. She's like, all right, now, now do this, you know? So 
I think working with them together would be kind of interesting too. But um, yeah, th thank you so much, Bella, for explaining that. Is, is it kind of the, the idea? I'm I, this is coming from a guy, so ladies, if I'm way off here, please tell me. But it's kind of the difference of going out with your husband on a date compared to going out on a first date with a new a new partner, where on the that first date you're trying to polish yourself up as fine as you possibly can, don't thinking about it all day long, figuring out what your outfit is. Compared to going out with dinner with your husband, you're like, eh, we're just going out to dinner. <laughs> I think, that, I think that sexiness is being comfortable in your skin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so you can be super hot and sexy in a wife beater and cut off shorts. You know, it's just, it's sexiness. Whereas Balbo is joy and laughter. Yes. The, the, yeah, the, so, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if it's like, oh, it's just you. I, I don't care about how I look. That might be uh Demeter but <laughs> it's, it's more about um you know just being comfortable in your skin is sexy yeah it is right so so feeling good about who you are is sexy it's just that I don't think Balbo Balbo is so much about sexiness as about just enjoying the dripping yumminess of life yes right and and aphrodite is like yes let's take all of this dripping yumminess of life and let's put it on fine china yes <laughs> no no that that's yeah. exactly that's exactly how i i viewed it and you know and it'll be more delicious that way mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you bella um i love balbo because of the humor aspect and the the dirtiness, the dirty sense of humor, that that body. She's a bit naughty. She's naughty. She's body. She's is it body or bowdy? Body. body. I always say bowdy. Body. Body. Bow. Balbo. Balbo's body. Um. And like I said, I she's there's people in my life that I love very dearly. My aunt Dora mm -hmm. was a bigger woman, and she would drink her beer. Her I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm doing okay. I'm half Mexican. This is how my Aunt Dora talked to Uncle Tony. She, she's like, I don't even know. Nobody wants to hear your singing. Um, no, but she would sit there and go and drink her Budweiser beer, and I would sit next to her, and she would just say the funniest things and this laugh that she had. You know that infectious laughter that just, oh my God, and she's made me really appreciate the laughter that I, when I, when I just crack up at something and you're in that moment, it's, it is the best feeling. And, and I just, I love that about her. Does anyone else want any, anything they want to say or ask? Do we have questions? Isabel. Isabel, please go. I was just thinking with what you were saying about the laughter, that one part of Balbo that surprised me was the trauma response the the comedians who have had all kinds of tragedy that they laughter is healing laughter yes. is medicine and it is okay to go to those dark places and laugh it into love and healing yes. that was so i get you you do shadow work with balbo yeah, you do. That may not be your first thought. No, it's but not. But you do. <laughs> but you end up doing it. Uh, I'm doing shadow work with, I mean, you know, this is witches and wine. We get real here. I'm doing shadow work with my vagina. I mean, to be honest, there is there is trauma that's happened to it. And I had disconnected myself from my my private area. I, I It was completely disconnected from me. And I did not realize how disconnected I was from it until Balbo came into my life and was like, hold a mirror and look at it. And I would hold a mirror and look at my vagina. No, I'm Phil, not mirror. <laughs> no, his nickname's mirror. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Mary Malinsky says, Balbo would love the vagina monologues. Yeah. Absolutely. Go ahead, but, Yeah, oh, no, well, let me okay, finish real quick. Um, but the mirror, holding the mirror and looking at it and just, looking at it like 
looking at it. That's hard to do. Um, I don't know if anyone else does that, but if you have any kind of trauma, do it. Um, I cried when I did it and um, I named her. Um, <laughs> I named her. She, yeah, she. I wonder if you have the same name for. Her. I don't know, but we'll talk about that later. I named her. I I talked to her, and now I look at her almost every day in the mirror, and I tell her I love her. I just I have to. I have even when she's not looking at her best. I'm like, I love you, thank you, and we're done. So Nim, please go. Um. So I have had brushes. Are you guys able to hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. I've had brushes with Balbo this year because I'm holding Hestia and Hestia loves Balbo. Balbo is unapologetic compassion. Balbo will pick you up from any gutter and make sure you are fed and warm and safe. And I think that we all can learn to be Balbos in our life or to remember and tap into that Balbo. Something that we are suffering with on a global level is compassion fatigue. And I think that with Balbo, we can dig into that and heal that compassion fatigue at the start of it in our heart chakras. That'll help yes. our sacral chakras heal as well. Um, and that's just what I really love about Balbo. Plus, she is a fever dream. <laughs> she is like batshit wild. And so she'll do anything. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell the story about you making that intro video? So yes. that intro video that you guys saw at the Gigliana, Nim made that. And this is really amazing what she did because I was working on my ritual with, with my husband helping me. I was going through the pacing and, and doing the music and, you know, taking the clothes off and stuff and making sure it all looked okay. And Nim messaged me. She goes, what you doing? And I said, I'm working on my Balbo ritual. And she goes, oh my God, because I'm feeling it over here. I just had a fever dream with Balbo and that's, she came up with that video at the beginning, which was just, I mean, what a, what a gift, what a freaking gift. And I, and Balbo, that is a gift to Balbo's the house of Balbo. Um, I would love to keep that somewhere of course, on file. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it was a random inspiration. Balbo was like, Hey, you want to yeah. play with some pussies? And I was like, yeah. And then she goes, great. Get into Canva. I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> yes. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was and my I pleasure. So and it was much. so funny that you were dancing while I was doing it and I didn't know it. Yes. So. Yes. So yeah. you guys were talking about how la uh, Isabel was talking about how laughter is the best medicine. I had a very vivid dream last night um, and Lola does dream interpretations. And so I wrote it out on our Discord dream interpretation channel. And I was talking to an elderly couple uh, who are, are of African-American descent. I don't know these people, but they were hanging out with my mom. And I was talking about how they've gotten through all their struggles in life. And the first thing she said to me was, if you, if you can't laugh, then you can't heal. And she reminded me that the only way to get through things is to learn how to laugh and to move past it. Because if you dwell too long, you're never going to get past it. Yeah. And it was so weird to hear because, like I said, I had no idea who this lady was. Um, but she was hanging out with my mom in our first apartment when I was a little kid. We were watching 80s sitcoms and the, everything around me was sitting. I was sitting like 80s sepia TV in the world around me in this process. And this was the imagery that sat with me. And I had to write about it. I woke up at six o'clock this morning and just started typing because I had to get it out. I love that. I love that. I'm passing on the, when you dream it, type it out, write it out, do it right away. Um, Cause that's how you're going to remember it. Um, yeah, it, it, it is. It's so, it's amazing. Um, can you share your, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're responding to Nim's question. In it chat. says, if you can, if you can, Lola, can you share your statue of Balbo vision? Okay, so when Bella invokes us for our rehearsals, um, one of the invocations she was talking about, you see the <laughs> you see the statue of your your deity. And I'm thinking in my head, there's not a lot of statues of Balbo. So what came to my mind was just a big old vagina like a big statue of a vagina. And then Bella had said, and the statue looks at you and like 
makes eye contact with you. And I'm thinking, how the fuck is this vulva going to make? And so I pictured a little head coming out of it and waving at me. (laughs) So now when I invoke and now when I invoke, that is what I see. I, I see this vulva and this cute little head just come out and go hello and then (laughs) and i just laugh and that's another thing when i invoke i don't know about the other vessels but when i invoke babel i get giddy that giddy laughter in me and i'm just like giggling and like so that just added to it so yeah we oh my gosh Thank you, Bella, for doing that without even knowing that you were really doing that for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're glad you guys are enjoying this. I'm seeing all the, the commentary in the chat. Thank you. This is why we do this. We want to make you guys uh, enjoy learning. Yeah. And, and, the and process, not make it so stuffy and lighthearted. This is witches and wine. The wine helps. Um one of the things when I get very emotional about is the love that Babo has. And when someone was talking about um, laughing at those parts of ourselves, that deep shadow work when that Isabel brought up and then laughing at those dark, those dark parts of us that we have made, uh, we have made almost a hurdle or an obstacle or whatever it is. Um, and when you can laugh, at that and now you know every time i had i we did the road to eleusis and we did the panel and i had talked about my invocation of balbo for lamas monologues and what influenced me to pull the things out of my vagina was like 10 minutes before the invocation and i had toilet paper stuck up there and and i'm pulling it out and balbo's going this is it this is it well that kind of stuff happens a lot not just that but just weird things that happen with our bodies um and when now when it happens instead of me going oh my god i i just hear balbo laugh and and it's just so amazing it's just like she's just really made me look at those things you're embarrassed about those things you're struggling with um whether it's body or whether it's uh, something that is blocking you from fully accepting yourself I literally hear her laughing and saying, I love you. I love you. And it's, God, it helps. I, I, everyone needs to work with Balbo. If, like I said, you just need to work with her. She's just amazing. Gentlemen, this applies to you as well. Support your partners. Uh, if, you know, <laughs> we're laughing at the pictures over here. Nim, oh, gets a great one. But yeah, no, you support didn't. your partners and understand. Amber, we see your hand up. I'll, we'll get to you here in a moment. Yeah. Um, support your partners and just because we don't necessarily understand because we may not have the physical body parts to truly relate, be accepting honor and, you know, value it, not just for the sexual nature, but for the power that the vagina provides to all of us. There is power in that. I mean, that's why people were sculpting, uh, vulvas and vaginas and those goddesses with their legs spread. And, you know, because that is a powerful image. It's a very powerful image. And I think Dusty hit it on the on the nose when he said that it scares those those people those the patriarch. We'll just say it, the patriarch that that is not good. They are afraid of the power that we have in that. And um we're we're taught at a young age that you don't talk about it. My mother, who's in her 80s, we weren't allowed, oh my God, she just would be dying if if she knew some of the stuff I say because I've said it in front of her and she's like no you know she taught us you don't talk about it you don't look at it you don't she used to catch me in my sleep as a very young girl I'd have my hands down my pants because you know when you're little boy or girl or whatever you're curious you're curious and you know you start playing with it and you're, you're like and she used to come in and she'd wake me up and go why are your hand why is your hand down your pants and I I don't Daryl, where's your other hand? <laughs> All right. Amber, go ahead. Amber, love. Okay, I'm so curious. Am I the only one here? So I had a moment last year. I think it was Bobo's energy. So I was looking through, you know, pictures and everything, and I saw a pomegranate, and I saw it swirling. I was like, 
that's interesting. So it's kind of like a spiral, but then I noticed the shape of it. I'm like, that looks just like a vagina. I started laughing. So yeah. it, it hit me right after I saw it reflected on it. I was like, if you think about it, everybody wants to put their mouth on the pomegranate. <laughs> there's so many seeds. Everybody can have some. So there's no yeah. way it's one person. It could be multiple people. It's anything about polyamorous. And it hit me more because you always slip the juice. Everybody wants to factor that. And I started laughing. I was laughing so hard. I'm like, man, I really need to go and scroll my vagina. I thought in my head. It was just so fun. I was laughing because I never would have thought. I was saw a pomegranate swirling like unique, like a wheel and everything. Like rock cagate. Yeah. And I looked at it. I'm like, it's a ship of my vagina. <laughs> and I say that picture too. And I'm like, I never would have thought the pomegranate's a vagina. And I it clicked. Like, everybody wants pomegranate seeds. Every, I'm like, and there's juice. Everybody slurps it. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. I need to go take care of my vagina. I thought maybe I should <laughs> it. It's fruit. And maybe it's fruit. Laugh. Yeah. Fruit is, I associate fruit with, with vaginas. I always have. I, it, it's, it's one of those things that just, um, and flowers, you know, there's flowers. And so think about those beautiful things we associate with that. Isn't that just gorgeous that we can associate that? So when you look at it and you're feeling disconnected it, from it, think of how beautiful it really is. There's beautiful vagina art. I have been looking at so much vagina art. And Me too? Yeah. What you're looking at is different, honey. <laughs> oh, I can um, artwork. <laughs> It's a masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. It is a masterpiece. Um, but there's some beautiful vagina art. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Sex in the City, but there was an episode where Charlotte um, met an artist who that's what he did. He painted women's vaginas. And um, he's like, I want to paint yours. And Charlotte is very prude and, you know, you know, whatever. And, but then I guess she, she agreed to it. And so at the, last scene of the show they were at the art show and they're trying they're trying to guess which art which vagina was charlotte's and it it was just i thought it was really sweet because they'd go is that one she's like no and i was like is that one no and then they go this one and she's like (laughs) she's like yes daryl good one what i tried to do that once but then she got away when i started bringing the roller out (laughs) And so anyway, so Charlotte says to the other girls, yeah, that's mine. And you never see it, but you see the reaction of the four friends looking at their friend's vagina, like a big print of it. And mm-hmm. they're going, yeah. And I just thought that is so beautiful that they're all looking at it and just enjoying it. And whenever I see that, I'm like, that is so Bravo. That is so her. So let's see. We are at. Isabel wants to call yeah. Me. Yeah, I just, I'm looking at our time. We have about 10 more minutes. Uh, Isabel, what would you like to add to this conversation? I love this. this is so well, fun. I was wondering if it would be okay if I read from the book of Pussy Prayers. <laughs> yes, please do. Please do. Oh, and before you do, during during our, um, can I get a clink? Yeah, clink and drink. Clink and drink. Thank you, Deb. Thank we have you not for clink reminding and We have not clink and, clink and drink in a while. Real quick, can someone tell me, because I think it was Trish during the Gigliana who was asking, why are there frogs in that intro video? She's like, frogs, what are the frogs for? Do you want to explain that, uh, Isabel? I think Kathleen can explain it better, because I always think of a woman's ass when I see the frog, but, but I know that's not the real reason, but frogs take me to Africa. So for me, Balbo was um, was the ancient African, be, you know, beautiful, um, very, very sensual, all about the water. But I know there's a deeper meaning to the yes. frogs. And I think Esme and Kathleen might be able to answer that. And, so I and can also, hold off on the position. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Frog. And then we'll do it. Also, the, the well, Nim says fertility, hydration. Also, the shape the shape of the frog when it sits looks like the shape of the Balbo figurines that yep. sit and spread their legs. That's what I learned. Deb said frogs make me think of moist, warm, and sultry, joyful energy. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot. Uh, Kathleen, yeah. Dive the, on in. Dive okay. on in. The, the, the frogs. Well, it's not just the frogs. You got to... I'm going to make this short because I know that we have a limited time. There's actually multiple 
cultural aspects. Esme and Scott the Frog defined a little bit more than me, but it's the well, it's part of the water, the well, the connection to the water and the connection to the vagina and the magic that, fro that frogs have. As far as I remember. What? <laughs> They're also related to magic and healing and, and, mm -hmm. all, and so there's a lot with frogs that 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 goes with transformation and transformation because, you know, the, the healing is can transform. They, they, they go from one of these to, to, to one, one of, of these. these. Yeah. So, yeah. So please read a couple yep. pussy furs. Thank you. And, and one last thing on the frog. So I um, I also became a crone with my time with Balbo. So that helped me so much with that transition um, to accept that. <laughs> I love that frog self. <laughs> oh my that's God. Awesome. Thank you, Self. That's awesome. That's amazing. You, <laughs> From the book of Pussy Prayers, Sacred and Sensual Rituals for Wild Women. Mm. My pleasure is my priority. I attract lovers who love me well. I am in control of my mind and my body. I am whole in every way. I am free of other people's expectations of my womanhood. I am a powerful creator and I manifest whatever I wish. I radiate and attract love, peace, and pleasure. Sex is healing and pleasurable for me. I am perfect. I am divine. I am delicious. I attract experiences that make my life juicy. Yes, yes, oh my goodness. Let's snap. Let's do the poetry uh, snap. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, we're, we're not from yet. Okay. And you know, the when we did the the panel for the road to Eleusis, and I was in the panel with yes, these clink, beautiful clink to that. Clink Liliana, and drink. Thank you. Clink good call, and drink. Liliana. Clink and drink. Thank you. Um, I have developed a sisterhood with these Balbos, and it is something special. It is just something so special. Uh, we have a Balbo chat and messenger that I never want to ever leave, ever, 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 because we share the most amazing. You can only imagine what the Balbo vessels share in chat. Like, it is just am <laughs> amazing. And so it really does. It, it brings women together. It brings the men who support these women together. Um, it, it, it's such a positive, a positive uh, energy to work with. Um, and I hope that we've gone over what, I, I mean, this, we've gone over a lot. Mm -hmm. This has been a great episode. I got one more question. Um, yeah, please. So, Nim, since you're running our YouTube, does anyone on the YouTube side who is watching this have any questions? Were there comments? any questions? Could you see them? Because we can't see them from where we're at. Okay. Oh, yes. All okay. right. Awesome. Well, and if anyone who's watching us on YouTube on the Witches and Wine channel, if you have a question, please put it in now because we are about to finish up with the live simulcast. So put it in now. Put it and, in now. Put it in now. And the deeper, the better. The <laughs> question. So. Oh, goodness. So uh, while we're waiting for that, um, is there any last minute questions? We have a couple minutes before we start wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's dirty now. <laughs> Thank you, Balbo. Thank you, Balbo. Everything's a dirty joke. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up. Put it in now. What is our favorite wine? Our favorite wine is Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yes, and, and we're big fans of the Margot region of Bordeaux, but we're just really, really big fans of Margot's. We're Mar Margot's. Margot is the region. Margot Bordeaux. Margot Bordeaux. Stripper name. Hi, my name's Margot Bordeaux. 
I'll be your hostess if tonight. I, if I was a stripper, that would be my name, Margot that, Bardo. Margot Bardo. Oh my God. That is amazing. It is oh, sexy. We love mead. Thank you, Josh and, and Lily. We really enjoy mead. Um, I saw earlier that there was a quite there was a comment on two buck chuck. I'm, I'm gonna make a little I'm gonna tell you a little story about two buck chuck. So Charles Shaw is the gentleman who makes two buck chuck. Michelle had comment on it. Yeah. So how he became known as Two Buck Chuck is Charles Shaw is a famous winemaker in California. He had made a whole bunch of money making wine. And when he was, <laughs> Belladonna, <laughs> thank you. Um, he had made a whole bunch of money making wine and his wife filed for divorce against him. Yes, this is a great story. And part of the divorce hearing said that she gets 50% of the price, of the cost of every bottle sold. So his exact words, and you can look this up online, pardon my French, because I'm going to swear, his exact words were, fuck you, bitch, you're not getting rich off of me, I'm selling this shit for $2 a bottle. So she gets a dollar off of she every... She gets a dollar from every bottle. That's why it's two buck chuck. Yes. Their, their, their bitter divorce is people's way to get drunk super cheap. <laughs> All right, were there any questions, Nim? Um, oh my gosh. Okay. So I'll, I'll get, let you have one and then I'll have one and then God. Okay. I've watched back on some of them and there was the one and you guys can find it. And okay. Ugh. Jesus Christ. There's, <laughs> two of, there's two of them. There's, oh God. there's one where we're talking about the element of fire uh -huh. and our whole coven was there. This is when we had a bigger coven and we had been drinking and I'm trying to get people to focus on the topic. And I had people sitting behind the computer drinking and we were clinking. I had people sitting on the couch and we were very tipsy. And through the whole freaking thing, I'm trying to get people focused and everyone's like, ah! and I'm like, okay, fire, the element of fire. And everyone's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, okay fire like that is like all i said the first five minutes is just, and i'm drunk fire the element of fire i was like oh my god i watched that back there are we have learned to um pace ourselves mm -hmm. because our earlier episodes were like let's drink a lot there, there's some shit show at the beginning there's shit shows in the beginning if you want to see shit shows just watch the earlier episodes Shit shows. If you if you want the funniest moment, all of them watch, watch the one on hallucinogenics. hallucinogenics. And um, I can't talk. That there is a moment in there that I am trying to talk and relay a message. I don't and, know what he says. Absolute freaking gibberish it's, comes out of my mouth, and I still don't know to this day what I've said. I don't I've either. watched the episode probably forty times, and I still don't know what I was trying to he say. He literally goes, and you see me go. I'm like look at him, like what the heck? So yeah, th those those are some of our favorites. And then we have our amazing guests. Amazing guests. I mean, we, Sarita De Este was an amazing guest. We Thorn had Mooney. We had Thorn Mooney. Jason Mankey. We had uh, Janet and Gavin. We had um. Oh my God, we've uh, had we, Oz uh, Oberon. Oberon Zell. Um, we've had a lot of really really cool. We've had numerous episodes with Bella. We've had Bella and Dusty have been on our show several times, and those have been really fun episodes. We've had um, a lot of ATC people. Um, yeah, it's we've had a lot of fun with Witches and Wine. And Brenna's we, done one. Yeah, Daryl, Brenna. Daryl and Brenna and Minty have done them. We had a special one at the actual church with Nim. That was yeah. really really fun. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of favorites. Um, yes, Roman has been on three yeah. times because we just love him. Um, yeah, we've had a lot. So that's where we're going to get to. This is our, our closing. Yep. So thank you everyone for celebrating this 100th episode with us. Uh, this means so much. Um, we've missed it. We have missed doing this show. This is now getting us back into it. Let's all clink and drink to our 100th and episode. And thank you, Dusty, for clink and drink. He was the one that... Dusty came up with clink and drink. And we have to give him his proper due for so... Clink and drink. Yes. So... If you're interested in what we do, if you want to be a guest, um, if you want to ask us questions, please email us at 
crossroadscoven at gmail.com. I'm sorry, what was that? That's crossroadscoven at gmail.com. So remember, always be kind to one another. Always walk with the goddess. And until next time, blessed, blessed be. be. See you blessed. next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much.